that a mobile truck? Uh, it's the only truck you'll see that's white probably. That is so cool. And if, you, if you're doing it for money, you're typically doing it for the wrong reasons. We all want to be paid and we want to provide for our families, but I think you got to know what your why is and, and what makes you happy. And What's up Stripe Nation? Blake Alberts here with B&B Lawn Care. I'm here today at Perfect Cut here in Iowa with my buddy Corey Ballard. We actually shot a video at his other company, Ballard Inc. So you guys can check that out up at the top right here. And uh, Corey today is gonna go take us a quick tour around uh, his one of his facilities. He has three facilities and then some offices uh, across the street here. Now guys, this is like I want, I want this to be some motivation for people, but as we talk about all the time, you know, don't get flustered if you're not, like, I don't know anybody at this stage besides Corey and a couple other guys, but like, I use this just as some motivation to say, if you want a company at this size, like, you can get there. There are people out there that get there, but, you know, you gotta be happy and satisfied with where you are and, and loving the process and, uh, I don't know, but this is some motivation for you guys. This is super cool. And uh, let's get to the tour, man. Friday right now with our lack of snow. Okay. This is operations only. Everybody over here is, okay. uh, this is maintenance operations. So mowing, lawn apps, okay. uh, landscape maintenance runs here. Our admin team's across the street, and then our construction and irrigation everything runs from another facility about another mile from here. Okay. Um, okay. So okay. unfortunately, we're in three spots, which is an ideal, but it works for us. So um, again, we're gonna have kind of a skeleton crew today because it's Friday and a lot of people are off today since we've been running winter hours, which is basically Monday through Thursday. Typically, two gals in here working on uh, daily work orders, routes. Um, okay. Bob, our operations manager, is usually usually in here, where he's at. I don't know. Um, the production office here. Well, I'll show you from the back side. But we've got some areas where we have three or four people work in you know, certain areas. We really wanted an open atmosphere where it felt a little more open. You'll see across the street we're really open over there. So it just feels like we can communicate better that way, where it's not everybody's not just in these silos. Um, typically we'll have up there, we'll have messages, logos, site photos, kind of scrolling. A um, couple gals work in here typically, but it's pretty empty right now. Um, small conference room here that we use if we need to have a private meeting. We've got a couple conference rooms across the street, but this usually works for um, employee meetings or issues where we kind of need some privacy. This is all storage and different forms and different storage things. So we've got men's, women's bathroom here. Um, everything, um, hey everybody. Everything we have now is you got to use a you got to use a key to get in. And, and the reason we did that is we had before we had it was just wide open. So. Everybody's coming in with dirty boots, talking to their people. We couldn't keep our offices clean. It was really distracting in the morning. So once the day's prepared, that they, you know, the management comes out with their sheets or apps, and that, that most of the conversations happen outside. We just had it, you know, we had, you know, there'd be 30 people sitting in the front in the morning, drinking their coffee, talking about what they did the night before. People are trying to get people out. Really distracting. So this area here, um, on applicators each have a kind of an area to work in. Time clock's right there. Um, get there. Um, well, how are we clocking in now? I think, oh, finger. Finger? Yeah. Nice. So everybody clocked in. We had other people clocking other people in. It's good to see it. All your laws here. We're running out of work to do around here. We're running out of work to do around here. How are you doing, man? Morning, buddy. Um, we've got a couple small offices here for some production managers. Um, we're still actually not completely done with the remodel. Uh, try to do a break area here. This is where in the morning a lot of the guys are meeting. Um, again, during the season we have messages up on the TVs, safety counts, and all kinds of different stuff going on. Maybe it's 
uh, stuff that's happening. Sometimes it's um, you know, employee of the week. It could be it, it, all kinds of different stuff we have running on the TVs. We try to set our guys up with um, the ability to have you know people say, "Well, I have to stop the cases to get a monster. Nice. I'll get you a monster." That's well, I like I like Red Bull. Went by Red Bull. <laughs> Um, That's awesome, actually. Like, stops the 20 minute stops. Yeah, the so we don't, the gas exactly. We don't allow gas station stops um, unless lunch or midday. So, does somebody come refill this and all that? Yep, they come once a week and fill it. Does it work or is it going to take much? <laughs> what? That's not what I wanted. <laughs> Pretty sweet. And then you said you gas everything up here, so you don't have any need to go to a we gas. Have no need to go to a gas station. That is, and that probably saves. Um, we so have, much money. yeah, we have on road, off road, and diesel here, and then a mixed tank as well. Let's see if I can get the right monster. Anybody want a juice? And what are the lockers? Just in so case. So applicators and a few people that have uniforms. Each have a locker, they dump their stuff there. So they come in in street clothes each day, they'll get to their locker, they'll get, uh, they'll have their clean. Um, oh, this is for applicators. Lawn applicators, they'll have their khaki pants, their clean shirt, they put it on. At the end of the day, they throw it in the laundry service. So each day they start with a clean uniform. Wow. Lawn applications is the one division. Uh, lawn applications and irrigation techs that they tend to get dirty and um, you know when you're wearing you know when you're dealing with chemicals and things we don't like them to take them home and have to wash them in their washer and so you guys wash them we have them. a laundry service that comes in and grabs them wow that's awesome all right let's see all of this man this is super smart i mean think about if it takes five ten minutes to get to a gas station you spend 20 minutes at a gas station i mean you can run up on 45 minutes in the mornings, just at a gas station, filling up, getting snacks, hanging out, getting coffee. This kind of eliminates that. Uh, that's pretty sweet, man. Let's check out the shop. Shop area where we're working on stuff. We've got a parts room around the corner there. Uh, the shop manager's got an office up here. You can kind of oversee what's going on. Um, one, of the, one of the cool things we've got here, um, so we've got a uh, screen up here each day. So. You can look on the screen and you can see um, everything that needs to be done, who it's assigned to, who requested it, the date, um, if it's a priority, if it's not a priority. Um, and so instead of just coming in every day and saying, oh, well, where do we start? Um, maybe these guys will tell you different, but um, we know exactly where it's located, what the problem is, what needs to be done, if it's been taken to a, a third party repair like Van Wall's an equipment dealer, so that piece of equipment went to Van Wall, we're wow. waiting on parts. So that is so cool. Everybody knows what's going on each day, and then they check them off, and then this is all done through an app. So if I'm out in the field and I tear something up, I put a work request in on my app, on my app on my phone, instantly comes up. You'll see that everybody put it right now. The priorities are all green. They have to sometimes make a decision what truly is a priority. Do I need it tomorrow? Is it is it not a priority? The guys like to say everything because to them, you know, their machine's a priority. So these guys have to decide then what, what really. What is a application is that? Like, how, what is that um, system? It's an app that we designed. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's our system. But Got that's it. just a smart sheet. Um, the app's through smartsheet.com. You can see at the top there. And then we created an app that feeds all these work orders in. So at the end of each day, they know every day they get in, they have they get there, they get a game plan, they know what to do. And um, How many people work in this shop? Uh, it depends on the time of year. There's probably four guys per day right now, um, and then in the in the peak just repairing things. Yeah, and then in the peak season, um, typically it's two during the day, three to eleven guy, eleven to seven guy, and then we have a kind of a fill, wash, change blade guy. So it's quite a process to keep all that running. Uh, My goodness. And these are what the mowing trucks are. These are all our mowing trucks are just like this. This is actually one of our oldest trucks here, 102, because I, um, so they're all Grassmaster bodies. Um, this is a 16 footer. Um, they have fuel tanks up top as well, so we don't have gas cans, so they have a mix and a regular. Um, and these trucks for us have been really nice just because you're not dragging a trailer. Most guys can drive these, there's good visibility out of these NPRs. You said you don't need a CDL for this? Nope. That is awesome. That's the key. Think about how much equipment you can keep on this trailer. Truck, trailer, whatever you call so it. So everybody, so this, the standard would be a walk behind, a, 
standard two zero turns. And that's the standard two zero turns. Yeah, two, standard walk uh, walk behind, standard two zero turns. Not everybody has a walk behind. Some crews have a thirty six for certain sites. That's sweet. This is one of our older ones. It's a little beat up. Those blower racks have seen some graph action, man. Yeah, look at them. Yeah, those are probably five years old. That's awesome. Come in here. You can't come in here and grab tools. This is you got to have you like. You're, if you're a mowing foreman, you just don't come in here and grab tools. Everything goes through the work order system. At night, like let's say a mower breaks down, and you said that everybody has their own assigned parking spot, do they just put that in the system? They put it in the app. And leave? Yeah, and, put it, it, and they leave, and then at night, the guy will repair it, and by morning, when the early guy gets in, there's a crossover, when the guy gets in in the morning, um, so the, usually the typically the day, one day guy will get in at six, and then he'll determine, can I get it? Can I get it up and going in the next hour, or is that piece down? And we typically have enough mowers that, hey, mower number X is down. We're gonna we're gonna have to put a different mower on that machine or on that crew today. Um, so we we used to not have extras, but now we usually can bring it in, service it. Anytime a truck comes in here, it only goes back out. We service what needs to be done. We go through everything though. If so, if it's got one problem. We go through it top to bottom, we vacuum it, we got a vacuum system here, we clean it, we vacuum it, we service, we check the brakes, check tires. We don't just bring it in and fix the one tail light that's out. We, we do, when it comes in, we do the full analysis because we know when it goes back out, we might not see it for a month or two. So we want to go through the whole process when it comes in. Uh, we also got a mobile truck. Uh, it's the only truck you'll see that's white probably. That is so cool. So it's got a uh, generator, welder, presser, um, and this truck can go out. It's got a winch on the front. Uh, it's got diesel fuel. Um, it's set up a little different right now for snow removal, but this truck can go out anywhere and do on-site mobile repairs. So we don't that's have to. Wicked. We don't have to. Um, so this goes out with all your mobile repairs. Um, again, he's got the ability to weld. Now, is that just like if a truck breaks down or like a big piece of equipment, or is that for mowers or? Could be mowers too. We got a mower down. He'll it, it, they'll put in a work order if it's an emergency. He'll go out to the job site. Um, in the summer, it has a lift on the back, but um, you can lift it up, do whatever he's got to do. If you fall in a ditch with the mower, you can pull it yeah, out. Winch you out. That's that is that is wicked. <laughs> See, that's what like that and like all this stuff is really inspirational and cool like but bigger companies you know are the only people who have a mobile service team that is that's really really cool man we've got our overhead, overhead fill systems for our um you know oil we've got all of our tanks in there and then we've got the guns right there so we can fill everything so we know we know we're consistent on, on the oh that's awesome so basically with having this locked if I need a tool, I can't just come can't and get come it because now you'll it's never locked. find it again. You can't come in here. Yeah. So um, if you need something, you got to go to your supervisor and then we'll decide if it's a work order situation. Um, you can't just come in here and grab a rack, you know, grab a DeWalt and take off with it. It, it doesn't work like that. I, I think I need that rule for my garage because I lose every tool. Exactly. Ever. We lose everything. It's, it's amazing. It's better. Out here is not pretty, but I'll show you kind of the mess. And we've got a building out back as well. This building is going to extend out. We've got uh, permission from the county. We're going to extend this another 80 feet and uh, turn this into a, there's going to be a, a kind of semi-heated area and then complete cold storage. But this is kind of a catch-off for, for right now. Um, we have all of our mowers stored at a different facility right now. That all, they've all been serviced and gone through, so they're at a different they're at our, a different shop. But um, I'll walk you through exactly the next two. I walked the other day with Britt from Long Leaders, and I was uh, fortified. Four four five. <laughs> I was like, "Please, please, 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 please. What's this for? Uh, we just sweep our own lot. Oh, okay. We just want to keep our lot clean. Uh, we got into the lot sweeping business. Uh, 15 years ago, and quickly learned that we don't know what the hell we're doing. <laughs> this is locked or not. And I don't even know how to get in these buildings. Uh, let me ask somebody. Bill? It's always funny coming to like larger companies and the owner doesn't even know how to like get in doors and stuff. I just think that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that funny? Like, you know everything about your business. That when it gets to a certain size, you can't know everything. So check this out.
And how many trucks are there? Uh, I don't know anymore. Um, uh, we have about 120 vehicles, but a lot of those are sales vehicles and, and different things. So. 120 vehicles. So if you wanted to walk out back, you could see a lot of stuff, but it's kind of muddy. Um, and I've already spilt gas on your shoes, so. Uh, those are a fill area for overhead fill and then wash bays. Like we're paying some equipment. Little 40-foot paint job. You know, stand, the stand, 40-foot paint job. <laughs> so we're obviously reorganizing and cleaning in here right now. Um, ideally, every landscape crew has a cage, and that's where we keep their equipment. They're responsible for their equipment. This is the cage you were asking about, but not locked. That's the problem. <laughs> so, do they have to unload every day? No, because because we're open 24 hours a day, we don't have to unload. Why? Um, so, because you have somebody here 24/7, we don't have to unload. We can keep everything loaded, which That's is awesome. nice. And we have security. We're not fully fenced in like we need to be yet, but this is where we keep blowers, trimmers. Um, this is trimmer heaven right here. My goodness. So we got some stuff in here. We're, we will be adding more because we're short. We had some stolen, unfortunately. But we try to keep the expensive stuff locked up. You know, we got some sod cutters, bed edgers. Uh, try to keep, we try to keep everything locked up when we can. Um, right now we're going through a lot of uh, just winter clean and reorganizing. If we can get some more life out of it, getting it looking pretty good. It's the, it's the standard monkey 20-foot uh, paint job. I love that line. 40-foot paint job. Is it a 40-footer? Well, 40, it's a 40-footer. That's definitely a 40-foot paint job. <laughs> Blue tape and spray paint. Well, that's the thing. If you can't, you know, you paint that crap in your trailers and stuff, and you, you know, it looks good going down the road. Nobody pays any attention. They're like, oh, they got nice stuff. What do they know? It's 10 years old. Check out all of these, man. This we've is got the just shows, sweet. And then we've got the stand-on aerator. Um, then we got the Z sprays um, that we use for our applicators. There's probably a bunch of blue trucks sitting back here. We must have a bunch of trucks at the other facility, but there's some water tanks, wheel loaders. So it's not pretty. I think it is. Okay, well. <laughs> so we've got, there's our fuel tanks. We've got a restroom back here, just a Kaiba. So does somebody come fill those tanks? Yeah, they fill them daily in the, in the peak, and right now I think twice a week. How, how much fuel does that hold? Um, I think that big one's 2,000, and then 1,000 and 1,000. I could be wrong. So, do you buy mixed fuel, or how do you mix? We mix, we mix our own mix. We do our own mix. Um, like in those giant things? We do it, yeah. We have one that we, we have one guy that's responsible for mixing those, and then it's got an agitator in it, because you, you can't let it sit. But uh, we have one guy only, because, you know, as you guys know, it doesn't take long for somebody to mix something wrong, and now you're starting to seize up engines, and so do you, like, how do you get that much oil? Like, is it is it we steel buy it in, oil? We or? buy it in 50, no, we use a different brand that we found, but we buy it in big 50 gallon drums. My goodness. Filter if we need to touch up, but we don't use many pickups anymore. Right. It, it, typically the sites we do have large equipment, but we have one pickup on site and they're responsible for the quality control, photos, start time, stop time, when does the sub leave, when does the sub start. Like you have loaders at those locations? Yeah, so all of, our, like, all of our loaders are out now. You know, so everything has wheel loaders, skid loaders, with Arctic pushers, and so um, we just don't run that many pickups anymore, but uh, we still have some, but. So that's where we were. That's kind of one of their shops. Yeah, so our, now we're here at uh, yeah, some so of the offices manager, here. Yeah, if we need something done, I tell him that we want to do something. And it just I meet with him kind of discuss, and then he takes care of it yeah. from there. This is our admin. I sit Matt's in his office. Because otherwise, I'm kind of. I'll introduce you guys to Matt real quick. Matt's my business no, partner for Matt. ages. Matt Bowman. Nice, nice to meet you. Meet you. you Matt, do you know Leroy? I'm Leroy. I don't think I've met hey, you, Matt. How are you? How are you? Matt Bowman. Nice to meet you. You guys are down. We're going to do a podcast. This we use for a little bit of training and kind of group meetings. There's not probably a lot in here right now. Um, 
Yeah, so this is just empty right now. Um, but typically if we have, if we're gonna do some training, we'll bring, we'll set these chairs and tables up and we'll bring 20 or 25 people in here, put a screen up and kind of do some spring kickoff, spring training. Um, the other bays are full of stuff. This one we kind of try to keep empty um, so we can use it for some training stuff when we need to. Um, it's not quite as big a mess as I thought. I'm not quite as embarrassed. <laughs> Well, you know, I don't know much. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe it. So up here we've got admin, all kinds of stuff going on. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. She's kind of the black sheep of the group. <laughs> <laughs> no cussing, wrong camera. Baby. <laughs> uh, small conference room here we use for different meetings. We've got another bigger conference room where we get our team together. but. Um, Jeff's right there. He's our CFO. He's in here. So we've got um, individual offices and uh, morning, Jeff. Morning. And then we try to keep this area open for just communication and morning. You're seeing, is, a, you're seeing a lot of me. This is the best place where everything happens. You're seeing a lot of me this week, aren't you? Yeah. What's up with that? Too much. See, always one person. <laughs> Yeah, we just redid this. At one point, this, there was a divide and you had to go outside to get in, so we just redid this whole other area to kind of open it. Have a working, open work area. And what is this for? Just accounting and everything? Um, admin and, uh, you know, project managers. This guy's working on stuff, selling stuff. Look at, look at him, he's making equipment standards over there. Look at that. <laughs> he just did that when I came in. <laughs> I keep this queued up. So you just queued that up. Doing good. Excuse me. Everybody pull up their good stuff up there. Pull something good up on the screen, yeah. <laughs> Kyle runs uh, our snow operations and our landscape construction, so two of our biggest divisions. Um, over here, we try to kind of create a um, kind of an open. Uh, yes. Hey, Corey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Wonderful. Kind of an open worker, you know, kind of area to hang out. Again, TVs, cooking area, restrooms. This is uh, just over some stuff. We just go over all these chairs Hopefully. right here because we moved. So this is our main yeah. conference room when we have our bigger meetings. We've been ceiling chairs, so we just ordered all these chairs to get in here. Uh, so in here we can get 20 to 22 people in here when we have group meetings, get stuff up on the screens, talk about what's going on. Uh, we use this room all the time. We've been using our smaller meeting rooms more, but this is our main room for our every Tuesday meeting. Um, I'm a little, con a little confused why our chairs are all gone. The, the new one should be here today. People. Right. What's going on, Boca? Don't worry, man. Jeremy runs our sales team, account managers. He's kind of the lead uh, business development guy. Um, always working on something. Man, that beard's getting vicious, buddy. <laughs> It's getting a lot of gray in there, bud. That's what Perfect Cat does to you. It does, it does this, it does this, and it does that. Morning, guys. Morning. Morning. So we tried to do kind of an open station here the same way. So account managers, and, and so they kind of, again, so they can hear what's going on. They can communicate. Maybe one person has a problem, and they can say, hey, you know, maybe I got a solution for that. So it's kind of... Instead of being all cubicled off and blocked off, we just kind of like that open workspace now, which I think you're seeing a lot of companies go to is the, is the open workspace environment. Uh, plus, it's easy to change when you need to. You can move stuff around. You don't have fixed walls. Um, How are you doing? In here we've got some irrigation techs kind of have their area to work. Um, able to bring trucks in here. I'll show you kind of out back and then we can, that kind of sums up our tour around here. What do you know? How you been? Good man. Got some more blue trucks back here hiding out. So yeah, then we just have some uh, trucks back here. We've got this bay is, is all holiday lighting so uh, commercial holiday lighting's all ran out of this space so we've got everybody's stuff well, stored um, like you know, trees and everything not necessarily trees wreaths we, uh, we custom make um, so if we cut if we custom make um, she put 
Does this kind of shut down in the summertime? Or? Yeah, totally. This is it's locked up. But we do a lot of holiday decorating for our larger commercial clients. We do interior decorating as well. So in here they build. They may be building specialty things. And then we, you know, we hang, hang stuff up by client. Um, huh. All this stuff is assigned to certain clients. That's when I realized. I'm like, I, don't, I can't manage everything. Wow. I can't manage everything that goes on. You have to rely on but this is for like what shopping centers and uh yeah all commercial um business parks hospitals um different things like that that we we take care of and you do you do any residential or just all larger commercials which you focus on yeah we do a touch of residential only the stuff we absolutely have to do but mostly like we were talking last night they're like big shopping centers or hospitals or Large industrial, a lot of medical, um, retail, high-end retail, malls, those yeah, types exactly. of things. I don't know if this is... It's not a thing I can do. Well, that's locked. This is full of uh, excess snow equipment, uh, salt bag storage is in here as well. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's what we got going on here. And then again, all of our big equipment, construction equipment is at another facility down the street, which is... It really is a mess. Um, we, we just moved into it in uh, maybe October, and because uh, we got we had to move our stuff because the county was on us, and we had another spot. So that's what we got going on here. All right, so that's kind of the end of the tour of this facility, correct? Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is. He's like, it's a mess, and I'm like, man, this is sweet. Like, this is what a lot of us dream about when we get into this business. Um, and we were kind of talking last night of. You know, not everybody has to get to this point to be happy sure. and satisfied with their business. And you kind of made some points on that. What are your thoughts? I mean, like, I think, like, during the summer, I'm like, man, I'm just not big enough. Like, I don't have enough clients. Sure. I don't have en uh, enough trucks, enough mowers. Like, and you talk, you're never satisfied. Like, you're not right. even happy. But that, that's not a good thing always. You know, right. not being content is, is my own challenge. But, you know, I think it's important each guy finds you know his sweet spot in his business and what makes him happy and how can he provide for his family and how do you get that work-life balance um, you know uh, bigger is not always better that, that comes with more headaches and risk and uh, debt sometimes and uh, so I just encourage everybody to find their sweet spot um, you know hire the great people uh, the best people you can create culture in your company provide great service and find that sweet spot for you and, and you can certainly grow your company um, uh, but do it smart and, uh, you know, again, find where it makes you happy because if you're always chasing that next account and, and if, you, if you're doing it for money, you're typically doing it for the wrong reasons. We all want to be paid and we want to provide for our families. But I think you got to know what your why is and, and what makes you happy. And um, again, I'm jealous sometimes of guys that find that sweet spot and, and they've got a really good work-life balance. So, uh, um, you know, our journey has been 30 years in the making and um, we're excited about it and it's fun. But it, it, it's also, again, it, it's, it's challenging. That's sweet, man. Well, thank you for the tour. Thanks for having us out, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Take care.